It's the next level. It's going to be a shit show getting Snowpiercer over that mountain. They smell our eggs, you know. Now they're craving fresh food like never before. Mm. Good. Everyone needs to stay hungry. Scar to remind you how far you're willing to go. All it does is remind me that Melanie flipped the tables on us. I know. Sound science that the Earth may be warming. It's fabulous. And she's departing on a veritable suicide mission, leaving Mr. Layton, our fearsome revolutionary, and tingling. This will be far more fun than simply slitting his throat. Back to the show, Panelers. I'm Steve. And I'm Daphne. That's right, Panelers. I'm joined this week by Daphne. She is one of the hosts of the Run for Your Lives podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment Podcast Network. And so I'm delighted. She's a big fan of Snowpiercer and uh, delighted to have her with me this evening. Why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, Daphne? Well, um, as Steve said, I am a podcaster and my friend Paik and I do a podcast called Run For Your Lives. It's focused on monster movies, creature features, disaster flicks, anything that makes you run for your lives, basically. So I'm really honored to be here and get to talk about Snowpiercer. It's a great show, and I normally don't get into shows that are in their first season because I'm afraid it's going to get canceled. But this one, I have just been on board right from episode one. So I'm super excited to break this all down. Very cool. Well, just to, to give out some information, we are, this is a spoiler full podcast for season episode three of season two of Snowpiercer. The title of the episode is A Great Odyssey. And uh, it's just a short synopsis. Uh, Melanie awa- embarks on her most dangerous mission yet, while Leighton reckons with his personal choices. Ooh. I like these very short, like, IMDb synopsis, because they're easy to read and they don't give away a lot. I know. I appreciate that, too, because I don't really want very many details when I'm heading in to watch the show. Mm-hmm. And this week... And in most weeks, I don't watch the preview for the next week, so I don't really know what's going to happen, because I kind of want it to be fresh when I'm seeing it for the first time. Very good. Well, why don't you tell us, uh, just for in general, what you thought about this this episode before we get into our specific details. I really liked it. I think one of the things that stood out to me is we got the start of the episode coming through in Wilford's voice. Mm Mm-hmm. I think it gave a little more insight into his character. And since this is season two, I did get worried at the start of the season that it might go into this, quote, sophomore slump that some shows go into. But I don't Mm -hmm. feel like that's been the case with Snowpiercer. And I think that given what we saw of Wilford in this episode, he's going to be a formidable foe. It's going Mm -hmm. to take all of them on Snowpiercer banding together in order to defeat him because he's very complex and he's yeah. got tentacles everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, you know, it's the same thing for me. I really loved this episode and that, especially that beginning hearing him kind of talk to his train, the way the snow piercer, whoever's, you know, um, leading snow piercer will talk to their train people. And it just was, was really interesting to just, and the music he's playing and the one woman who like, shuts hers off so because she doesn't want to listen to his voice um was just it tells us a lot about what's going on in in big alice with just this this short few minutes that we get there exactly i think it gave us a lot of information of course i found myself wishing i could tell leighton all the stuff we learned (laughs) (laughs) to help him because of course i'm team snowpiercer i'm i'm team leighton so I just, yeah, I'm really excited to see where this season takes us. And I feel like the first three episodes have really given us a lot to chew on. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to see what happens next. And I do think Wilfred is one complex and scary dude. Absolutely. So um, let's go into just our top five kind of discussion points, and then we'll talk about some notes. And if you've got any quotes, we usually do some quotes after that. Um, So why don't you kick us off with your first kind of bullet point, your first thing? Okay. So my number five is Josie. Mm. Josie and her power. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about her being alive when they first revealed it. I was kind of like, uh, it kind of reminds me of a soap opera, mm-hmm. like someone coming back from the dead. So I kind of wasn't sure how I felt about it. But now I'm seeing that she, she really wields a lot of power. And in the scenes tonight that she had just, you could see it a lot in, in, in listening, you learned that, you know, the last Australian and the mm-hmm. others are very loyal to her. Yeah. And very anti-Melanie. Mm-hmm. And I think that Leighton is going to be very conflicted about all of this because he, of course, loves Josie. Plus, he has a child that is going to be born at some point. And I think he's going to find it very difficult to be balancing what's best for the train, what's best for the tailies, mm-hmm. what's best for Josie, what's best for his unborn child. Well, yeah, I thought that was really interesting in that scene when they're when they're going to the muster stations and and he sees Zara in the hallway and she's like, where are you going? And he's like, well, nobody's in the, the clinic car with with Josie. And so Zara tells him, you go ahead and go, you know, go be with her. And I just thought that that, that was kind of interesting on one hand because Zara was trying to keep him away from Josie last season or mm-hmm. trying to keep them apart. So I'm not sure what's going on there. And of course, last episode or episode whichever episode it was she tried to kill Josie yeah you know um so I'm not I'm not sure what's going on there with the with Zara so yeah it seems a little weird to me um I do have this feeling though based on what we saw with Melanie and that special skin that you know I don't know their names but I call them the doctors Frankenstein oh yeah well it's (laughs) it's Woodhead or or Headwood something like that yeah it's Headwood I think it's Headwoods Headwood I think is their last name. They're very creepy to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I just have this feeling that Josie's going to end up down there and they might be able to help her, which I, I hope, but I also hope that Josie hasn't become so bitter that she can't see beyond the importance of the work Melanie's doing and how important it is to keep everything kind of, it's kind of like juggling, like keeping everything Mm -hmm. in the air or keeping everything balanced and realizing that they can't always get everything they want all at the same time. It takes time to build like this democracy, which Leighton is trying Mm -hmm. to do. And I'm hoping that Josie will not um, influence him in a way that's going to be detrimental to the work he's trying to do and really just trying to build a better society. Right, right. Well, so my first one is just the confirmation. Kat and I kind of talked about this uh, in the last episode that uh, Alex was did have that razor blade. She was going to slit Leighton's throat. That kind of was the the plan there. Ugh. And I didn't even pick up on that at all. And Kat, Kat picked up on that last week. So credit to her uh, for – And but we do get – like I said, we get that confirmation here that that's what Wilford wanted. But then, of course, everything got stopped when they got the, the hope about the outside warming up. Yeah. Agreed. I, that makes me sad. And mm-hmm. I'll get into some things about Alex later because she's actually on my list. She's on my list too. So we'll <laughs> to, 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 when we get to talk to talk about her. So. Yeah. She, I think, started being very negative and very focused and mm-hmm. she's got her own opinions of things, but they're mostly opinions that Wilford has drilled into her. I mean, mm-hmm. she's had how many years of Wilford saying bad things about her mother without really understanding what happened. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take her some time to, I think, break through and realize that what Wilford had told her is not necessarily all truth. Mm -hmm. Because he's very manipulative. And I feel like we've seen that so far. Absolutely. He's he's scary himself. So yeah, yeah. He's very charming, but very scary. Uh, Sure. I'll give you that. (laughs) (laughs) So what's your next point? 
Uh, so my number four is Leighton as a leader. Mm. I feel like during this episode, he got a lot of advice from people about various things that he should be thinking about. I feel like Melanie gave, you know, gave him advice to trust Ruth and don't lie to her because she's mm -hmm. a straight shooter and she doesn't want to be lied to. And Ben even had, you know, some really great, um, he had some great comments about Wilford and I really enjoyed their conversation that they had where he talks about, you know, he chooses you and then the knives come out. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's probably the best advice he got because Leighton really needs to understand how serious Wilford is and that he is not going to just let him continue to run Snowpiercer. And with Melanie leaving, it's going to be mm -hmm. even more intense because I feel like Melanie being there has kind of kept some of the bad things from happening. And I, I think Wilford's just waiting for Melanie to be gone and he's going to, he's got plans in, in place and, you know, yeah. they keep talking about someone, about there being a mole on Snowpiercer and I'm trying to figure out who the heck could the mole be? Yeah, I'm not sure. There was a little bit of that with like with the Breachmen, you know, um, all basically being loyal to Wilford. And, and last episode, they said they stayed out of the war. Was that they stayed, you know, they stayed out of everything uh, just to see how it would shake out. Um, and I actually had that conversation. That was one of my points was Ben and uh, Leighton talking about Wilford. And I love how he said he that they he and Melanie would not let Wilford divide them. That yes. they just they made a decision that they weren't going to let him get in between them, and I thought that was that was really cool because we didn't get to dive into that relationship in the first season, so we're really getting to see that here. And I, I think you're right. I think Ben's going to be a very good advisor to Leighton because he's you know he's been aware that Mr. Wilford's not on not been on Snowpiercer this whole time, all yes. these 17 years that they've been traveling, you know, since the world went to crap. Yes. So. Um, so my next one was really just uh, Alex and Melanie. So we can talk a little bit there. Um, I, I love how Melanie's trying to be a mom to her, you know, and, and Alex is is trying to show her how smart she is. And uh, that Rowan Blanchard, you know, it took me, I didn't recognize her in the first season. And now I'm I'm suddenly starting to remember she was in Girl Meets World, the the sequel to Boy Meets World uh, a, a couple years ago and had a completely different character. But uh um, really great and just their interactions are really just outstanding to me and those two actors are really pulling that off very well yeah I agree I never watched Girl Meets World however um, I think Rowan Blanchard's killing it yeah. as Alex I really do I think that she brings something to the role I mean to me it's little details but you can see in her face, like, she's able to convey emotion in her face in a way that endears you to the character, even if you're Team Snowpiercer and, you know, you mm -hmm. believe in Melanie. You can't well, I, help but get connected to her daughter. Yeah, and I just, I absolutely, I just, that whole scene where they're in her bunk and that one woman, I think that was the woman who shut off the speaker at the beginning, was yes. waiting for her there. And it just, it was so special to see how she had the the lines set up and she had a window that she could look out and so and melanie's like yeah i do the same thing tracking the movement of the train and then melanie shows her how she can and we saw this in the first season that, that melanie knows the train so well that she can just feel the vibration and she's like you got a wheel out of alignment you know and just like last season when she felt the walls and she announced for the brace because she knew the avalanche was coming was just a, just really, really good. And I just, I loved the way they worked together, getting up that vertical climb and, or that making that curve and then going up, you know, was just really, really great. I think too, that we got to see a little more connection between the two of them. And we also mm -hmm. got to see how much Alex is really like her mother. Yeah. Well, and I love something I didn't notice until the second watch is that she was calling Melanie mom when they're alone together, but when Wilford's around, she called her Melanie. And I, I think that's some, maybe some of his hold weakening a little bit on her. I think so too. And um, I think that she's very smart. And if Wilford, mm -hmm. Wilford, 
I feel like he underestimates Leighton, but I also feel like he underestimates Alex. Mm -hmm. And he also underestimates the mother-daughter bond. Yes, absolutely. And I, I think, think, yeah, I think that could come back to bite him in the end. I, I think that's going to be a key um, either throughout the season or definitely getting towards the end of the season. I think that's going to be a, a key, that relationship there. Yeah, definitely. I think it, it's it's complex. It's complex. And I was really glad, though, that that uh, Ben explained some things. And we'll get to that maybe when I talk about my number two, because okay. that's coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what was your number three? Uh, my number three is actually Melanie and Alex. Oh, okay. Yeah, I feel like they, you know, they really bonded in this episode and we got to see the real connection. And I mean, we knew that Jennifer Connelly was extremely talented, but I think her on-screen chemistry with Rowan Blanchard is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I'm just really excited to see more of it, even though we're not going to see Melanie for a while. Which I'm a little bit disappointed, but I'm also like, you know, I hope she comes back at just the right time. Yeah, I was, I was, that was an interesting point. And I'll talk about it a little bit more later um, about Melanie, but them saying that it's going to be a month. So they must be able to control the way the train travels. And there must be more tracks than just the one because it's, they're going to take a month to go put out those buoys and the things, and she's got to get the station set up. I wonder if they're going to show us her journey to the station or not. I hope you know? so. I feel like they have to. I don't feel, I don't feel like it's good storytelling to leave that completely out because we're invested in Melanie, even though, yes, she did some things last season. I did not, I did not like it. I mm -hmm. still not over some of the stuff she did last season, but I just, I don't believe it overall that she's a bad person i just think that she was hardened and conditioned to having to do what needed to be done mm -hmm. at all costs to try to protect everyone and i feel like she puts like the whole train ahead of one or two people yeah exactly and i think that's something that, that kat pointed out last uh, last episode as well is that we didn't get to see the softer side of melanie in season one, because she was pretending to be Wilford and she was leading the train. Now that she's not leading the train, we're able to see the softer kind of side of her. I think that's that's really cool. Yeah, I really appreciate the scenes that she has had with Alex and also with Ben. Yeah. Because I feel like we're getting to see, yeah, that softer side, the more compassionate person mm -hmm. that's there instead of just this, you know, the hard ass that's. Do, trying to do the right thing for everyone, but she really did, you know, not think about what the tail's needs were because I feel like she, you know, she was focused on everything else and yeah, it's pretty brutal. So yeah. I can't forgive her for some of the things and we'll see this season. I still yeah. think she's a great character. I just don't mm -hmm. have to like everything that she does. <laughs> right, right. Well, I... I you know, they're definitely setting her up or they're setting Leighton to be at odds with, with Wilford now that she's going to be off the train. So, yeah. Uh, but, uh, so my number three is, uh, Pike losing, kind of losing his place there at the table with the janitors. Oh uh, because yeah. Because he can't bring the weed in, uh, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really cool. Um, but then of course, you know, Leighton has, it tells him to reestablish his connection there and tells him to just only weed that he's only supposed to peddle weed to them but that he wants to control what comes back is that how you put it i feel like he wanted to control the information that pike was supplying to them right in addition to the weed like all the weeds um you know it's his world like pike wants to be mm -hmm. the dealer and i feel like Leighton just really said you know what go ahead but i want to control the narrative i want right. to i want to be able to tell what tell you what you can share with them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that's, I think that's going to be an interesting relationship going forward to see how that plays out over the season. Cause this is something that he's kind of doing. It seems like he's kind of doing this on his own. I don't know if he's got till or anyone else involved in, in this, this kind of undercover kind of thing he's setting Pike up for. So. Yeah. I don't think anyone else is involved right now. I think it was something he just realized, okay, we need to build these connections, so 
this is what we're going to do. I do hope he involves Till because I think they've got a good connection with each other. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, they trust each other. And I want him to have someone he can trust to talk to. And I don't think it's Sarah. I don't think it's Josie. I feel like it's got to be someone outside of that. Not someone he's been romantically involved with. I feel mm-hmm. like he needs to have a a confident, whether it's Ben, whether it's Till, whether it's mm-hmm. even Ruth. Maybe he'll talk to Ruth. Although right. I'm a little skeptical. I'm a little nervous of Ruth because. Yeah, she, <laughs> she, she goes back and forth between this loyalty to Wilford and loyalty to the Snowpiercer passengers and this, you know, just like this episode, they they sent that list and she's like, it's not on the right stationery, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, oh, I like um, her though. I like Ruth a lot. I don't yeah. like, I, I don't have to agree with everything that she believes or everything that she does, but I like her as a character. I think she's oh, interesting. I to absolutely watch. love her as a character. Last episode, which was amazing yeah. as her, with her character. So, yeah. okay. Your number two, I think is where we are. Okay. So my number two is Wilford himself. I feel mm-hmm. like, he, it was, he was almost my number one, but I feel like there was something a little bit stronger that I had to bring up for number one. Okay. I feel like, as I talked about the, his narration at the beginning, plus the behavior throughout, there's one point where he's like walking through his beautiful car that he lives in, and he's like fake conducting an orchestra as he's listening to music, and that mm-hmm. just made me think, you're just like you're a conductor. Like you mm-hmm. want to be like the puppet master behind everything. And I do believe that he's evil. And I think Melanie was right to leave him behind because he is only looking out for himself and he mm-hmm. is comfortable using Alex and others as pawns. I mean, look what happened to Kevin. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think he's connected to the people that work with him. He, They may feel like he has their back. I don't think he has anyone's back. I think he's only focused on himself. And there's a big game going on. And we don't know all the pieces yet. But I think he views himself like he's the conductor of an orchestra. And the train is the orchestra and he's the conductor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Because I think we saw that this whole class system on Big Alice... And that there's people just living there. Even Alex herself is living in this little tiny bunk. Oh, and we're allowed to decorate it however we want, you know? Um, And then he's got this lavish, this lavish car, you know, that he stays in. He's got his dog. And uh, it just was, it's, it's, oh, I just can't. It's frustrating, I think, because you want the, you want the rest of his group to realize who he is. Yeah. And they're not. They're not, yeah. they don't see it's, it. It's like, even though hospitality sees it, they don't, they don't care or they don't mind, or they're so, they're so in his thrall, you know, that, that they can't see past what he's doing. So. Well, he's very charming. And in some ways I feel like he's gaslighting them, I guess. Oh yeah. I could see that. I could yeah. See that. I think that. Well, that's what he's been doing with Alex this whole time. Yeah. Telling her, you know, and, and we'll probably, we'll talk a little more about that when we get to our, our number ones, I think. Yeah. Um, but so my number two, I'm going to switch it up a little bit and go go down into my notes because we already kind of talked about my number two, which was Ben and and Leighton. Uh, but Melanie going out by herself to the station was a surprise. I it was it surprised me, but at the same time, I realized I guess for the story, she had to be alone. Mm-hmm. It just it just didn't seem right to me that she's going to go and be able to take on this this research station. Is it designed to be ran by one person? You know, uh, what's they, going on there? They haven't given us enough information. And mm-hmm. I thought it was a strange idea to do that because she's one of, like, the constant thread characters that mm-hmm. people know. And I think, you know, as a showrunner, it's a little bit dangerous to send one of your characters off, especially mm-hmm. one as important as Melanie to be by themselves in this place that we may not even get to see any of it. I'm I'm not really sure. But, you know, I think it drives the story because I think overall the conflict is going to be Wilford versus Layton. Yeah. And they well, had to take Melanie out of the equation in order to get to that point. 
I think I think you're right. That's that that makes a lot more sense of story wise and writer wise, but just logically, it I have to I have to put it out of my brain. But then there's that whole conversation that he has with the docs, uh, you know, about icy Bob, and and he's like, no, he's got to be able to to withstand colder. And they're like, well, do we have the full month? And so I don't know if he was planning to use I maybe to, to get to Melanie or I'm concerned it, about that. I'm so concerned about that because I feel like Icy Bob is a wild card. There are a lot of wild cards mm -hmm. in this in this show. Alex is a wild card. Josie is a wild card. Icy Bob is a wild card. I mean, there's just so many. But right. I'm not really sure what his purpose is. But now that mm -hmm. Melanie's going on this mission, I'm starting to think, I think he's there. He's going out there to kill her and destroy the data because i think the bottom line is wilfred doesn't want this thing to end oh because no then he, he wants go ahead sorry <laughs> no no you're i think you're totally right he doesn't he doesn't want them off the train he wants them to stay in that world because this is where he's king yes you know this is where he's he ha he makes all the rules and if you start making settlements outside because the world is warming up you know he's gonna lose that control mm-hmm and he doesn't want that. He right. wants to have control for as long as he can. And this show, control is becoming a very important thing. Yes. So go ahead with your, with your number one. All right. Well, my number one has to do with control. It's control as a weapon. Mm. We learn that Wilfred is his jealousy. Uh, ben tells us that his jealousy is about being able to control everything. If you look at the bigger picture, Leighton might be the leader, but Melanie, with Melanie there, she still has some control. Mm -hmm. And her control keeps Wilford at bay. Josie still has some power with the Tailies because I think they would follow her and not Leighton at this point. She could incite another riot at any time with those mm -hmm. with the Tailies because I really think that they... They trust her, and I think they look at Leighton like he sold out and he didn't protect Josie, so they're focused on her. And then mm -hmm. you look at the Breachmen, they're under Wilfred's control. They're loyal to him. So they have some a little control of their own, but they're loyal to Wilfred, so it's kind of connected with him. And mm -hmm. Alex, Alex has some control of Big Alice. I feel like she is the one that understands how to run the train mm -hmm. even though wilford may have more information i think alex has more control than she thinks she does and ruth is still in high regard with a lot of the train and with mm -hmm. melanie not, not there ruth kind of inherits some of that because she's mm -hmm. not looked at as as someone who lied about wilford because she didn't she didn't know she didn't know she she thought well i mean we saw that in the first season we were she had a breakdown for a little little bit yeah when she learned that wilford wasn't actually on the train yeah uh, and he sold ruth i feel like wilford sold ruth a bill of goods that don't actually exist mm -hmm. and she doesn't understand it yet because she hasn't been around him enough to be able to understand who he really is i think mm -hmm. she re she thinks she knows but i right. don't think she knows who he is and yeah. so looking at Snowpiercer, at first I was thinking, well, this is a big, you know, chess match, but I don't think so. I feel like it's a much bigger game than that. Mm -hmm. And control is a huge part of the puzzle. And I think whoever gets control will get there because they've used control of their piece as a weapon against the others. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it's going to be because, yeah, I don't know, just it's going to be a great season, I think. There's it is. Excited <laughs> for, uh, what is it, 13 episodes? I think so, I think, yeah. Think so I'm excited. Um, my number one is it's kind of like that that same thing with your control, but it's the, the specific control that we see with Wilford when he's like whispering in Alex's ear about Melanie being gone. And he's like, all you have to do is touch the brakes. If you touch the brakes, she won't, mommy won't have to leave, you know, and Again, he's just, he tries to control her, but then, because he wants Melanie off the train. Yes. But he also wants it to be Alex's choice. Yes. 
for Melanie to get off the train. Yes. Cause that's, I think that's what Melanie says, right. Mm -hmm. Is at the, at, or Alex says at the beginning, she says the first time was it was an accident, but now it's a choice. Yes. You know, the so first I, time. I, yeah. The first time it was a decision decision. That's right. And the second time it's a choice. Yeah. Which is yeah. worse. I mean, because you're making that decision, but I think Alex actually understands why her mother is doing it. And I think that Wilford, you know, I think that, I think Melanie was right when she was talking to Alex about Wilford wanted you to do these things so they'd be on your conscience. Mm -hmm. Just remember those are his, you know, that's hit on him, right. not on you. And right. I think that's important and may come into play later because Wilford, he's been working with Alex all this time to get to this moment where they're, the trains are together. <sighs> Although mm -hmm. he would prefer they weren't. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I That was an interesting scene, you know, when he was telling Alex to, to disconnect the trains. And then she, when she did, that just fused them together. So. Yeah. Melanie is a smart cookie. Yes, yes. And her daughter is very smart, too. I think the similarities between the two. I think I, now Alex is starting to see how similar they are. And I think that's going to help their relationship mm -hmm. further down the road. Well, I, again, I go back to that scene where they're working together and she calls her, Melanie calls her engineer because that's what she's doing. Yes. She's, they're, they're the engineers now. Mm -hmm. And it was great the way they, they talked to each other. It, you did talk about control though. And it looks like Alex has more control over the dog though. Yes. So. <laughs> Jupiter loved it. Yes. I, I thought was that was so, so happy. <laughs> that was so great when, uh, when he tells the dog to, to stand up and she's like, yeah so. it was great it was so awesome i love that dog too i'm just like oh don't be loyal to wilford you can't be loyal to wilford because i don't want anything to happen to the dog that's just me it's one of those things that when i watch a movie or anything i'm always worried about the dog or the cat yeah. or whatever pet. oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah i remember i <laughs> me too what was that that movie it's, was it uh which one was it with the dog crawl uh, we crawl, just did crawl yes, recently crawl, oh. right the dog as the dog sugar better survive. yeah sugar yeah yeah i'm so worried All about right. that dog <laughs> so do we have any notes that we haven't already talked about um i just i have a couple mm -hmm. um uh, one i found it really funny the opening conversation was Alex talking to Wilford about, well, they're smelling the fresh food. And mm. Wilford's like, well, you know, we got to keep them hungry. And then Leighton comes up to do a, a trade with them. And he's brought all this fresh food. So I'm thinking, ah, oh, Wilford, you might have thought yeah. that they don't have anything on this side of, of the border. But I think you're underestimating a lot of things. I think also... He underestimates Leighton as a leader, although I think he may have started to build a little bit of respect in this. I think by the end of the season, he might be wishing that Alex had killed him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love and when, you know, Leighton throws that piece of fruit at and we see again, we see the control he, that Leighton, uh, that uh, Mr. Wilford has over hospitality because yeah. he throws that piece of fruit and you can see she's just salivating over that. Yeah. Like she wants that. Uh, that food and and wilford can see that and he's like no i think we'll we'll discuss it later you know and so well i think it's what killed kevin like mm -hmm. the food i think the fact that he ate the food yeah i think that yeah. wilford couldn't handle that he did yeah. he just wanted that control and wanted them to give all of themselves to the mm -hmm. mission or to him and kevin just couldn't do that and unfortunately he didn't make it after going back and having his nice little bath. That was really, that scene mm. oh, really. That scene. Oh, it, the Willie's just even thinking about I it. Know, <laughs> I know. I know. One of the other things too, Audrey in the night car is one of my favorite mm -hmm. characters. And watching her in this episode show like that she's a little intoxicated and it's like she's, she's cracking a little mm -hmm. bit. I think part of that may be she's still mourning. Clay was her bartender buddy and they worked together a lot. And he, of course, was in that car that got detached oh, and right. died at the end of last season. And so I think Audrey's struggling with 
everything that's going on. I still also think that maybe there's some connection with Audrey and Wilfred that we haven't seen yet. Well, and yeah, that's something I was going to say. She's one of the few characters that interacted with Wilfred before the train. Yeah. So she knew him, and like Ben, she knew him before the train, and she knows what he's like. So yeah, interesting. I think she might be. Yeah, I think she's going through a lot right now, and I'm hoping we get to learn more because I think she's a really cool character, and mm -hmm. I like the actress that plays her, and I'm interested to see where they take the take her this season. Yeah. Um, my last note was about Till. I like that she's embracing her role as a detective, although I think she probably should find a, <laughs> another place to sleep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> instead yeah, I of... forgot about that, that she broke up with the, the girlfriend yeah. there at the end. So, cause they were on opposite sides of the, of the decision to fight. So, yeah. um, yeah. And you, you just reminded me now I remember that it was the first class car. It was a bunch of the first class cars, right. That they, that they got rid of and kind of yeah people yeah yeah so um well a couple of my mine was till i had one about till also i just love that that uh the word is kind of getting out because when as soon as she steps into the breachman's cars well she's been there before but they're like trained dete detective you know and yeah uh, so I, I i love that i like till as a character and i i, I want to see more of her um yeah, me they too. didn't they they didn't tell anyone that kevin was dead they no. said that he's just not available or he's ill or, oh yeah, they said he's ill. It's something he ate, you know? So I wonder who all actually knows that Kevin is dead. If it's just Wilford and Alex or are there, is there others? I can't imagine that Alex would be even okay with him killing Kevin. Mm -hmm. Like I find this, if she really knew, mm -hmm. I just can't imagine she would be okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I think we need some more information and why not tell people mm -hmm. like, why not? He could have made up any story mm -hmm. and he's done nothing. Like there's no word about Kevin at all. And I'm hoping that that will be something that Ruth finds out and will push her towards working with Leighton more. That could be, that's, that's a solid theory. Yeah. Um, I think the only other one in mind that we haven't already talked about is uh, the Breachman, the tattoo that he has that's got the, the W and then it's got honor, work, and order yeah. uh, that he shows to the detective, shows to Till and them. Uh, I thought that was, again, we're seeing this loyalty that the Breachmen have uh, to Wilford and that control that he has over them. So Yeah, and I think, too, it was interesting that Till compared them to firemen. Yeah. And that, that relationship between firemen and policemen in, in, in most TV shows is displayed as kind of, uh, you know, opposite each other, kind of against, you know, a rivalry kind yeah. of thing. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was an interesting uh, comment. Yeah. I feel like they made with, in between that, it's kind of like this careful alliance that's been put together. Mm -hmm. They work together when they have to, but otherwise they don't want anything to do with each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like on 911 where they're just all friends. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We got a couple of quotes here. I've already said my first one. This isn't the right stationery from Ruth. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> I have a follow up um, that she said right after, which she's walking down to go to the border and she meets Roche and she says, Engineers and mountains, almost as big as. Um, she says, engineers in mountains almost as big as their egos. I found yeah. that funny. Yeah. Really funny. <laughs> uh, my other one was was in that scene when Till goes to talk to the breachman, and she says, you boys can oil up and talk at the same time, right? I, just... I thought that was like she was smacking them in the yeah. face kind of with that. I liked it. I really liked that. My other one was really the, the comment that Ben made to Leighton, which was, you know when he chooses you, you enter his core. It's amazing at first. He's amazing. Then the knives come out. He divides people for sport. Melanie and I refuse to let him. His brand of jealousy isn't about anything normal like love or betrayal or sex. It's just about control. I feel like that quote is going to follow us throughout the entire season. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that was a very fun discussion of Snowpiercer, episode th season two, episode three. Uh, thank you so much for, for coming on. Do you uh, uh, have any podcast you want to recommend? Well, I always, it's funny because Paik and I always recommend Panels to Pixels and the Snowpiercer coverage and Mark's other podcast, which is Adrenaline Cinema. 
um, because they're, you know, we like listening to you guys. And Absolutely. Yeah. We love listening to you too. So. so it's a lot of fun. And yeah, so those are the two that I recommend. I also listen to Strange Indeed. Um, I'm not sure they've been working or covering the stand for a while. And that's going to be wrapping up soon. So I like to listen to that one. Other than that, those are my main podcast i'm listening to right now yeah for me we, we we often sometimes i forget mark it's always good to to recommend your guys's podcast always like to remind people about tv podcast industries that's a uk oh, yeah uh podcast it's super popular over there apparently because uh they're they're covering um moanda vision right now as mark and ben are covering for this for this show so we're half of the show is snowpiercer half of the show is the week's episode of WandaVision. I know it's great. You guys are doing two a week. That's that's a lot. Yeah, and that's why we decided to just kind of split up the it was when we did that first episode, it was huge. It was we both were trying to do Snowpiercer and WandaVision. Mm -hmm. And it was just it was just too much. And this is a chance for us to to bring in uh some some guests, some friends of ours, and hear some other people's voices. So I know. Well, I'm really happy that you invited me on. I love this show and it's great to get to break it down and talk about it. And yeah, I've enjoyed my time. Well, thank you once again. Uh, let me take care of some uh, boilerplate stuff. I don't know if, if uh, this is going to be the first part of the episode or the second part. I never know where Mark's going to put it. Um, but you can hear us on all your podcast player of choice. They're out there. Uh, you can check out our website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. Uh, we've got a Facebook page, facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We've got an email address, panels to pixels one at gmail.com. And uh, then we also have a YouTube uh YouTube channel? Is that what they are? They're channels, it's right? It's a yeah. YouTube channel, uh, yeah. That you can subscribe to, and that's Panels to Pixels podcast. And uh, so next week, we will continue our coverage of episode four of Snowpiercer season two uh, with uh, another special Daphne. <laughs> <laughs> that will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, where can, you just already talked about your Run for Your Lives podcast. Yeah. But uh, I do appreciate everything you've done coming on here tonight, Daphne. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for listening. I'm Steve. And I'm Daphne. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night.